this lecture, we are going to cover the objectives of testing. Here, the learning objective is to identify typical objectives of testing. Since this topic is marked as K1, you have to remember the points. Before we jump to the objectives, you must know what work product and test item mean. Work product is nothing but the output. Let's understand this. These are the steps followed during the development of software in an organization. The first step is to get user requirement. Then we develop system requirement. Then comes the global design. Next is detailed design. And the last step is an implementation where software is developed. When we say work product, in the system requirement stage, the output is a system requirement document. In the global design and detailed design stage, output is a design document and in the implementation stage, output is code. Therefore, we can say the work products are the system requirement document, design document, and code. So keep in mind, a work product means output. The next term which you need to know is the test item. The test item is also known as the test object. And it is defined as any document, component, or system which is under test. Let's see the same example to understand this. In the requirement stage, the requirement document is work product. Now, if this has to be reviewed, then the requirement is referred to as a test item. Similarly, if we are in the implementation stage, the output of this stage is code. And if we want to perform testing on it, then code is our test item. In simple terms, the object under test is referred to as a test object or test item. Now we will cover seven objectives of testing mentioned in this syllabus. The first testing objective is to prevent defects by evaluating work products such as requirements, user stories, design, and code. Let's understand this objective with an example. As we saw previously, the first stage of the development cycle is the requirement stage where the requirement is gathered. The next stage is the design stage. In this stage, based on the requirement, the design is developed. After this comes the implementation stage, where code is written. Here, the code is implemented based on the design document. Now, suppose the requirement is wrong and it was not checked. This will result in wrong design, wrong implementation. But we can prevent such fault multiplication if we evaluate the work product before it is sent to the next stage. Therefore, remember the first objective of testing is to prevent defects by evaluating work products such as requirement, user stories, design, and code is the objective of testing. The second objective states to verify whether all specified requirements have been fulfilled. Let's understand this. Suppose this is the customer requirement. For a web page, when the login details are given, the next page should load in a few milliseconds, and if login details are not correct, then show a pop-up. But if you look carefully, this requirement is not complete. There are open points. Few milliseconds mean how much time? Which page will load next? What is the pop-up content? These are the questions which need clarification so that we can fulfill the customer requirement. Like this, in each stage, we have to verify whether all specified requirements have been fulfilled or not. Remember the second testing objective is to verify whether all specified requirements have been fulfilled. The third objective states to check whether the test object is complete and validate if it works as the users and other stakeholders expect. As we know, 
test object means object under test. When you are in requirement stage, the requirement is your test object. In the design stage, the design is your test object. And at the implementation stage, code is your test object. Now let's continue with our example. As per the third objective, we need to provide input to the test object and check the output if it fulfills the stakeholder requirement. That means once the test item is ready, we need to execute it to see if it is fulfilling the customer's requirement or not. Therefore, remember, the third objective is to validate whether the test object is complete and works as the users and other stakeholders expect. The fourth objective is to build confidence in the level of quality of the test object. Let's understand this. Suppose we are in the requirement stage, then the requirement is our test object. And if we clarify our requirement in this stage itself, instead of clarifying it during the implementation stage, then we can build confidence in our requirement and finally in our product. To achieve this, we conduct the review after each stage to verify the work product quality. Remember the fourth objective is to build confidence in the level of quality of the test object. The fifth objective is to find defects and failures, thus reduce the level of risk of inadequate software quality. Let's understand this objective. As we know, the output of the requirement stage is the requirement document. If we find the defects or failures at this stage, we can reduce the defects at subsequent stages. It will improve the quality of the software and thus reduce the level of risk of inadequate software quality. Remember, the fifth objective is to find defects and failures, thus reduce the level of risk of inadequate software quality. The sixth objective is to provide sufficient information to stakeholders to allow them to make informed decisions, especially regarding the level of quality of the test object. When we find defects, we don't need to fix all of it before release. But what we can do is to provide sufficient information to the stakeholders regarding defects and risk associated with it, which will help the stakeholders to prioritize the future activities. The seventh objective is to comply with contractual, legal, or regulatory requirements or standards, and to verify the test object's compliance with such requirements or standards. Sometimes you need to fulfill the legal requirements. For example, if you are working for the automotive industry, then you need to fulfill ISO 26262 standard for the safety critical requirement. Before we end this lecture, let's understand the last point. Testing objectives are context dependent. Till now, we discussed general testing objectives whereas the objectives are context-dependent. Let's understand this point with the help of an example. Let's take two different test levels, component level and acceptance level. When you perform testing at the component level, your objective is to find as many defects as possible so that they are not found during operational use. Increase code coverage. Whereas if you are in acceptance level, your objective is to check if the system works as expected and satisfies requirements, to give information to stakeholders about the risk of releasing the system at a given time. So, in different levels of testing, the objective changes. Now, let's summarize all the points. The seven objectives of testing are to prevent defects by evaluating work products such as requirements, user stories, design, and code, to verify whether all specified requirements have been fulfilled, to check whether the test object is complete 
and validate if it works as the users and other stakeholders expect to build confidence in the level of quality of the test object. To find defects and failures, thus reduce the level of risk of an adequate software quality. To provide sufficient information to stakeholders to allow them to make informed decisions, especially regarding the level of quality of the test object. To comply with contractual, legal, or regulatory requirements or standards and to verify the test object's compliance with such requirements or standards.